Hello, in this video I'd like to show you how to create a cool crystal glass procedural material in Blender. So that you know, here are some details of the system and kit that I'm using. So I'm using Blender 4.2, long term support, Windows 11 and Nvidia graphics card and I'll be rendering in the Cycles render engine. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. To start things off, I will let you know that I'm in the shading tab. I have the viewport shading uh, display render preview enabled. I'm using the cycles render engine and I have a Suzanne model shaded flat to give us those nice crisp edges and what I will do is apply a new material to that but I don't want the principled shader so I'm going to get rid of that I do need a glass principled shader so we're going to press shift a and search for that and we'll pop that here and in fact I'm going to duplicate that so shift D duplicate that two more times underneath and then one more time just up over to the left a bit. Now this one here is going to be our main glass colour so if I press N to open this panel here I can give it a label and this will replace where it says glass BSDF and it will say glass colour so I know what uh, I'm looking at. Now I am going to use an add shader to mix those together. So I'm going to need two of those. Oops, I'll just duplicate that one instead. And I will also need a mix shader. So we'll get that in there. Let me press N again to get rid of that box. So I've got a bit more space to work with. Now what I'm going to do is plug this one the glass color into the top slot in the mix shader so the top uh, green slot and I will connect that to the material surface and you can already see we've got some glass effect going on I'm going to take this top glass shader and put it in the top slot of the first add shader and then connect that to the next one and plug this into the mix shader so we've got a nice clear glass there. I'm going to take this second glass shader and plug it in here. And then this third one I'll plug into the bottom slot of the add shader. Now a lot of weird stuff is going on right now, but we're going to control that with various different things soon. The first thing that I'm going to do is add a light path node. I'm going to use the top one, the is camera ray, to plug into the factor of the mix shader. Now I'm going to need to control the index of refraction on all of these um, glass shaders. So I will get myself a value node. I'll press N again to open up this panel. And I will rename it so that I know what it is. Index of refraction or, because it's such a small node, IOR. I'm going to need another one of those, so value node. And this one is going to be the dispersion. Now I'm going to need a couple of math nodes to do a couple of quick calculations. So I'll put one in and I will duplicate that and bring it down. Now the dispersion value I'm going to set as 0 0.044 and the index of refraction at 2, that would be crystal glass. It's somewhere around that region. Now I'm going to plug this index of refraction straight into the index of refraction on the glass colour. Oops. 
Don't want to do that. And this dispersion node, I'm going to connect to the bottom slot on both math nodes. This top one, I'm going to plug into the top glass node. And this bottom one into the bottom glass node, both into the index of refraction outputs. Oh, sorry, inputs. Now, we actually want this top one to be subtract. And this bottom one to be add, so we'll leave it as it is. And then this value and this value are going to be controlled by the index of refraction value. So we'll connect that to there and that to there. So that's doing good already. But basically what we're trying to achieve with this group of nodes is the kind of effect where you get different colours bouncing out. So as the light comes in, it's kind of all condensed into a single sort of white looking colour. But we want that to fracture and come out as different colours. So what we're going to do for this top one is set that to be pure red. Uh, so, oops. So we want that to be full saturation with a hue of zero. This middle one, we want full saturation, but we want it as green. So let's say 0.35, maybe 0.3 instead. There we go, that's better. And then for this bottom one, we want that to be blue, so full saturation. And then let's head around to get ourselves a nice blue color. Let's say 0.66 on the hue. We're going to set the roughness to 0 0.001 in each of those. Now I could have controlled that with a value node, but I thought that might just get a bit too heavy with the nodes. And then for the distribution, because I'm using cycles, I'm going to use Beckman. But if you're using anything else, you'll go for one of these two. And don't forget the one at the top as well. And the same for the roughness there. Now I've forgotten to connect one of the index of refractions and that's for this middle one here, the green. So I need to take the index of refraction and plug that in there. And that gets rid of that kind of pinkish hue. And you can now see, as we look at the model, we've got all sorts of different lighting happening depending on where we're looking at the model. So the light's going in and then almost bouncing around and splitting and then coming out at different angles which I think is rather, rather clever. Now that, believe it or not, is our crystal glass procedural material. And you can obviously add that to any other object you like. So if I just add back in a couple of these orbs, I will strip them of their subdivision surface, shade flat, and apply the crystal crystal glass material. And you can see there now we've got a lovely crystal glass effect. Now I said about this being the glass color. If I go back to the Suzanne, or in fact, actually, let's apply this to the back. Uh, so let's give ourselves another copy of this. And let's link that to here. And then with this glass color, we can add saturation so that we actually get some kind of tone and color coming through as well as the refracted light or the dispersed light. If you go too hard with it, it will tend to block out that color. So kind of try and keep it um, fairly subtle but that's one way of adding some color to the glass 
you can actually drop the value as well to make it darker and you'll still get that color refraction as well so if I send that to render what I'm going to do is a noise threshold of 0.5 and I'll put the denoise on because um, I've got an NVIDIA card I'm using the optics um, you can set a time limit because this is glass because it's dealing with a lot of bounce of the light nodes this can sometimes take a long time so if you set the noise threshold relatively high so 0.5 keep your samples quite high and maybe just set a, a time limit say let's say 30 seconds for each frame and add the denoise and then we'll see what we get That actually came in at six seconds, so I was a bit um, a bit over there. Um, but as you can see, the light from this glass is coming through this glass. It's all getting refracted and dispersed. You can, of course, change this um, by just reducing the dispersion value slightly. So let's say 0 0.03. And it will give you slightly less. And obviously, if you change the index of refraction as well, you will get less of that color refraction or even just slightly different results so you can play around with these two values not too much here because these are generally constant values um, this obviously you can change the overall color of the glass or if you just want it crystal clear just set it to a value of white and as I say the index of refraction the lower it goes the less um, variation and bounce you'll get and uh, basically two I believe is about standard for crystal glass obviously it's going to depend on the scale of your object as well so keep that in mind this monkey head is currently where is it about two meters by one meter so if you scale this down you might need to adjust some of these values to take that into account but you should be okay if you do scale up or down, remember to press Control A and apply the scale transformation as well, as that can sometimes make a difference. Uh, let's try it on a 0.1 noise threshold. I'll keep that time limit there and we'll see if we get a different thing. By the way, in the compositing node, I do have some slight lens distortion going on. In fact, I'm going to adjust that a bit. Um, there are other things you can add like glare and bits and pieces for extra special effects which I did do for the preview video in this. There you go. I hope you like it and I hope you'll use it in whatever projects you're working on whether that's abstract or archviz or anything in between. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. And of course, any questions, comments, thoughts, all of that stuff, please feel free to throw them in the comments section below the video. And I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can.